This is the Book Legion Podcast, where we review thought-provoking books to give our Legionnaires the knowledge they need to dominate the next level of their life. Everybody, thanks for joining me on the Book Legion this week. My name is Ty Evans. This week, I'm going to be covering The Dark Side of the Light Chasers by Debbie Ford. So I, this book was actually a referral by Sean Whalen, who's, who's an influencer that I follow. I read his book, and he suggested a couple throughout his book. And this was the one that it came up a couple times. So I picked it up. Um, I was not familiar with that before. She unfortunately passed away in 2013. She was a California native. But anytime I see uh, Deepak Chopra, uh, you know, puts a comment about how impactful the book is. This book is profound. Debbie Ford systematically outlines the steps to wholeness and transformation. I said, hey, you can't go wrong with this. So I picked up this book. Uh, Debbie Ford, she was a transformation coach, a speaker for more than 20 years. She started, was the founder of the Ford Institute. You know, I mentioned she passed away in 2013, but she was in this space for a couple different decades. Um, so me, I mean, had a little bit of a childhood trauma, I think that we all do. I was interested to read this book to see how I could start to complete uh, my wholeness. I'm someone who believes in energy. I've always liked uh, light work or light workers. It's something that's always fascinated me. So I thought it'd be a great book to read. Uh, so I'm going to cover my top three takeaways from the book and discuss them with you. Again, it's very objective as my opinion, my own takeaways. Uh, with this type of book, there's no right or wrong. You could read the book and probably not get the same different type of takeaways that I got. And that's the beauty of it. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about as far as a takeaway in the book was accept the bad like you do the good to be complete. You can't be whole if you ignore the other half of you. And she really, and this is I think what drew me to the book, you know, think about the, the title of the book, The Dark Side of the Light Chasers. And so the only person I ever heard really talk about embracing this darkness is Tim Grover, um, who wrote the book Relentless. So what Debbie really starts to talk about, it's not possible for you to be a whole being, to be your best self, if you're completely denying one whole aspect of who you are. We all have skeletons. We've all made mistakes. A lot of us have been through trauma. A lot of us have had bad shit happen to us. And when you try to show the world that none of that has happened or it doesn't affect you, it's not relevant, and that's the projection that you're giving, you're denying yourself what you're truly feeling on the inside, especially if you've been hurt, especially if you've had struggles, right? Or maybe especially if there's a part of you that is like a deep, dark secret that you just don't like and you'd be very embarrassed if other people found out. She talks a lot about how then you're denying the wholeness of yourself and you need to really start to embrace this quote unquote dark side of you. And so I'm going to read you a quote from page 48 that I thought it kind of encompassed what she was talking about uh, pretty well. If you have to act in a particular way to avoid being something you don't like, you're trapped. You're limiting your freedom and robbing yourself of your wholeness, just like I was just talking about. You know, this is the kind of the essence of the book is how do you become whole? How do you just be comfortable in your own skin? And so she talks and she gives a lot of different exercises and practical things you can do in the book to start to embrace this dark side to become whole and then accept all of who you are. And I think that's really important today, especially with social media. So much of us just want to show our highlight reel, the best of who we are, but we want to ignore those parts that chip away and actually limit our potential and our growth by ignoring those uh, internal struggles or that dark side. So Debbie talks a lot about how to work through that and why you should embrace it. The second part that she talks about or the thing that I want to talk about was taking responsibility. And now you've heard in a couple of different videos from me, I think personal responsibility is something that's come diminishing very quickly from our society. And you know, I heard Andy Frisella say something the other day that the only thing uh, noble about victimhood is overcoming it. And this is really what Debbie's trying to have you do is overcome your victimhood and take responsibility for all parts of your life. And so I wanna read you another uh, quote here on page 80. When you use your wounds to grow and learn, you don't have to continue to be a victim. So she's telling you like harness that, right? And so for me, I said, I mentioned, I went through a little bit of my own, my own trauma as a child. Um, both of my parents ha had some addiction issues, which they've since, you know, were able to kick and whatnot. But so there was a, maybe a, a bit of a dark period in my childhood. 
But what it's since taught me to do is what it's taught me to, to be very aware of how I digest substance, you know, especially when it comes to alcohol um, or cannabis or anything else out there, right? Even prescription uh, medicine, we're seeing this huge explosion of opioid addictions. And so it's always about taking responsibility for your actions, right? But also using your wounds to help you spur growth and opportunity. And really for me, you know, on my other podcasts, a lot of the stuff I talk about and what I've gone through is I want to be able to leverage those stories for the greater good of humanity so you can learn through what I've learned, right? So I can harness what I went through as a perceived victim and I can help people get over what they're going through by the things that I've taught myself, maybe through meditation or through breath work or talk to them about how therapy, how I've used therapy or whatever it could be. Right. And so, you know, it's a lot of this is just take responsibility for your actions, take responsibility of stuff that's maybe been done to you that you didn't think was fair. Okay. It was done. It happened. Right. If you want to look in the rearview mirror and stay in the past and live in the past, and that's where you're going to stay, you're never going to be able to move forward with a fresh perspective. So, Owning everything you've gone through and looking at it as a learning lesson, it's the only way that you're going to start to complete that wholeness and truly have the growth that you want to be able to max out on your full potential as a human. And then the last point I want to talk to you guys about, so what you love or you can't stand about somebody else is an unspoken truth about you, right? So um, let me just read that one more time. What you love or can't stand about somebody else is an unspoken truth about you. And I love this quote, and it's so true. And it's one of the things that the book sheds the light on the most is, man, just have a little bit of empathy, right? Come at people with a little bit more grace and a little bit more ease. We're really tough on people. But when you don't like something about somebody, it's probably because it's something that you don't like about yourself, right? Or if you really admire somebody, it's because you identify one of your good qualities in them. So you naturally going to gravitate towards them because it makes you feel comfortable. It validates and solidifies who you are. And instead, just like I said, on the contrary, when someone does something you don't like, it's probably because you don't like, maybe like you don't like somebody who has a certain temperament. It might be because you struggle with your own bad temper that you don't like to tell people about. It's something maybe just you and your family about. To the world, you want to project that you're an easygoing uh, person to get along with, but maybe you struggle with road rage. And so when you see somebody else struggling with the same thing, but maybe they're being a bit more vulnerable, we tend to cast judgment on that person as a showing them and giving them empathy because we have to recognize, again, it's probably something within yourself that you don't like that you need to work on. And so it's these small clues to say, hey, what well, here are my strengths. I can recognize my strengths in this other person. Uh, yes, I want to share those gifts with the world. But on the flip side, with the things I don't recognize I, or I don't like in other people, I recognize within myself, that's just a good signal of writing it down. Have some reflection. How can you start to solve those issues? How can you start to get maybe, uh, if you have anger management, how do you get that under control? Do you take anger classes? Do you read books? Right? Do you work on breathing uh, exercises? Same thing. Maybe you judge someone for what they eat or a political affiliation or a religious thing. Maybe it's because you're not concrete within your own body, with your own belief systems, right? So these are all things, and what she really talks about is one, once you start to accept yourself as being whole, and you start to be able to move forward with empathy towards other people, it allows you to um, appreciate that we are all flawed, right? We're all flawed and we're all perfect. We're imperfectly perfect. And so though she just does a, a beautiful job of talking about how to recognize your own faults, but also how to recognize them in others and how to accept others' faults and how to take accountability and responsibility for your own and then use that for the greater good of your life's purpose. Um, it's a book that I would highly recommend, especially if you're someone who maybe did have a little bit of trauma, if you've experienced trauma in your life, you've had struggles or obstacles you've had to overcome. It's a great book to wrap your mind on giving you acceptance that it's okay and acknowledging that we're all flawed. Um, so I would definitely highly recommend it. I mean, the book's been around for uh, since 1998. You can see it on Amazon. It's got over a thousand stars, uh, like 4.7 stars out of five stars, right? O over a thousand different reviews. You can pick the book up for, I think it's like right around 11, 12 books. I'll put a link in the show notes. You guys can cruise down, uh, purchase the book. It's only about 200 pages. You could really knock it out in three or four hours. It's a really easy read, a great read. 
Um, she said there's there's great exercises in there. And another thing I didn't mention is she she gives all kinds of really great stories about people she's worked with that have gone through their own transformation. So highly recommend it. Again, the book, the link will be uh, in the show notes. If you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be in the notes as well. Um, if you guys haven't done so, please subscribe to the podcast. Appreciate it. I drop book reviews once every week on Sunday. Uh, so make sure you turn on your notifications and drop me a five-star review. Leave me a comment. It makes it easier for other people to find, but I also would really love the feedback as well. Uh, but thanks so much for listening.